Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and in this video, we're going to be showing you waffle grids and flexbox grids. Now, waffle grids, like vertical grids, are a little bit different than something that we've seen before, and flexbox grids are really what we've seen already with Lost, except for the code sort of powering the grid system is just a little bit different. It's using flexbox instead of floats. So check it out. Let's get going right now. So in the last video, we went over some helpful properties that uh, come with Lost, with the Lost Align and Lost Center. In this video, we're going to be talking about the Waffle Grid as well as the Flexbox Grid that come with Lost. So to get started, let's check out what the Waffle Grid exactly is. So let's come to our code here, and we're going to essentially... Uh, let's come to our HTML, and I'm going to get rid of these paragraph tags that we had last time. We don't need them. And I'm going to combine grid 1 and grid 2, like so. Then we have a lot more grid items, okay? So let's see what that looks like. It should just be um, one big grid like that. Cool. And this is just your standard wrapping grid like so. If we were to, let's say, have a 1, 2, 3, 4. Or I'm just going to count up here. That way we can uh, see exactly where each grid item is. That way we know what's vertical, what's horizontal, that sort of thing. Okay, nothing crazy. Nothing crazy going on there. I can actually go ahead and give this a font size of, let's say, like two M's or something. Um, that should probably be sufficient. And for some reason, it auto completed to font style instead of size. Okay. There we go. So we now have some numbers here. Now let's go ahead and try out this waffle grid. So we used loss hyphen column before. So let's come to our widest breakpoint. And at the widest breakpoint, which is uh, this 13 right here, uh, you can see that we have it into four columns, cycling on four with a 50 pixel gutter. Now let's actually just get rid of lost column and let's say waffle. So lost waffle. I'm going to get rid of this, uh, the cycle and all this stuff too. And I'm just going to say one quarter. So lost waffle one quarter. Now let's come and refresh our page. And you'll notice it's sort of interesting here. We basically have these divs and each of their heights are wrapping the actual container. They're not really given any height. The height of the div is actually being taken away. The gutters vertically and horizontally, however, are absolutely the same. So what is a waffle grid doing? It's sort of a combination vertical and horizontal grid where the spacing is all even and it's going to fill the height of its parent. Now these, because we didn't give a height to the parent, are wrapping the content to sort of the smallest size they can possibly be. And then with the gutter size, uh, so this is the total height there. Let's go ahead and actually give this grid a height. So we had grid one, and we can give this a height of something like 100 VH. Now this is really interesting here. If we inspect this, let's check out this grid. Uh, let's make sure it's at the widest spot here so we can make sure the waffle grid's going on. And you can see that we have grid one and the height is 100 VH, so 100% of the viewport here. So now each of these grid items is taking up one quarter of the width as well as one quarter of the height of its container. So it's creating sort of this box or waffle where we have a bunch of even spaces, even gutters, and even sized divs here. Uh, so you can see when we decrease this, the height, because the height's not changing, the height of each of these divs won't change. H however, if we do change this from something like uh, we had 100 VH, Let's come to our CSS and let's actually change this from 100 VH to height and let's say 90 VH. So you can see as we go down, it's maintaining that even space uh, to visualize the height of the container. You can see that the divs are taking up one quarter each. So the waffle grid is essentially a combination of uh, vertical and horizontal grids. So just like other grids, we can assign this a cycle and a gutter in the same order, and then a determine whether or not it's going to be using Flexbox. 
So now let's actually get into the Flexbox grids for Lost. This is a nice time to talk about that. Now the Flexbox grids are way cleaner than using like a floating grid because you don't need clear fixing. It's using only Flexbox instead of just floating your elements. Uh, and that's awesome. However, Flexbox has quite a bit less uh, browser support than even calc does. Now calc you can even augment with a polyfill and flexbox you can do some stuff to make it a little bit better too but if you need more backwards compatibility uh, by all means stick with the floating grids and use the polyfill but if you don't check out using the flexbox grid. Now you can actually make any grid a flexbox grid simply by adding flex to the end of the properties. Let's actually remove this waffle just to make things less complicated. And we're just gonna say column again. And let's say it has a four cycle, it has a 30 gutter. And let's go ahead and say flex. Now by passing this the flex property here, we can refresh this. You can see we're almost there, but there's some weird stuff gone. We add, uh, If we head to our section, you'll notice that it's not actually gaining any sort of display flex, obviously because we haven't told it to. So in our CSS, where we had our lost center, we can simply add flex here. Now I'm gonna remove this 100 VH uh, because we don't need it anymore. And let's come back to our page and refresh. And as you can see, our grid is now, once again, looking like how we'd expect. This has a display flex on it, so it's using Flexbox. Each of these items are no longer floating, but they're actually flexing in here. However, let's go ahead and say, well, we don't wanna to need to throw flex onto everything, right? But we still wanna take advantage of the Flexbox grid. We can actually set Flexbox to be the default grid system simply by a setting here. So let's come to the top of our page and let's add a global setting. Like we did with the gutters, we could say lost, and then now the setting is going to be flex box and the value is going to be flex. Now, if I save this, you'll notice that I don't have flex box on my center. I don't have flex box on any of my grid columns. However, when we come to our page, you can see it all looks the same. The section is getting display flex and it just needs, and it just knows you want to be using Flexbox. Now for me, I love using Flexbox and I don't need to support older browsers like IE8. So I typically use the Flexbox setting all the time. However, if you do need to support those browsers, make sure that you know what is supported and what isn't before getting in over your head. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video or hit us up at Twitter or Facebook. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.